The last episode ended with a successful mission, but with the water tower being out of frame, I had to do it again. Let's dive back in and see how I fixed that. Before we do that, I want to remind you that we are uploading drone and evil related material weekly to help you get the best out of your equipment. So if you're new to this channel, then please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on new stuff. So basically there's uh, two options now. Either I go higher, I could try and go as high as uh, 100 meter or 100 meter, which is the maximum allowed height in Denmark. So, and relaunch the mission and see if that helps. Another option is uh, to um, to work on the capture angle, and uh, but I don't really see how that works. So let's reduce the speed a tad, and then try and relaunch the mission uh, at the, the double height at 100 meters. The capture angle is not vertical as needed to fix the framing. It's horizontally. Increasing uh, the capture angle will only increase the spacing of the captured images. I would recommend to keep it low. This means there's basically only one option to fix the framing problem, and that's the altitude. And uh, of course I need to check that battery is fine. Battery on the, the remote is 70, on the drone it's uh, 69. So we are good for another mission. So I press start. Like that, and hold. And then the, the drone will take off uh, shortly. There it goes. Now it's climbing to 100 meters. Yes, and it's uh, on track, so it starts to capture images. Don't know what this is for. Maybe it will allow me to see what the drone is actually seeing. Ah, oh, that was smart. So this is the way to actually prevent from what happened before. Is if I turn on this, I can actually see that it captures images uh, where the object that I want to capture is uh, in uh, inside the frame. So, uh, that was a neat thing. Basically. Yes. And there you might see uh, what, uh, what uh, the, the problem with uh, when I generate the model later is that uh, the bottom part of, uh, of the water tower is uh, basically not visible. So that's, that will not be included in the model. So it requires a little bit of planning to do this uh, the right way. So let's go back to the map. So now the mission is done. And it's returning back. Again, it landed dead center on uh, the launch pad, so nothing to complain about there. And you can see now it's uh, synchronizing the pictures that we just took on this mission. And uh, we already know now that uh, it, it has captured the object that we want with this uh, camera pre preview, which was a pretty nice thing that I didn't know before. But um, hey, I'm learning as well. This is uh, so. Let's go back to uh, the project list and see now there's a project 15. And I can go in here and again see. Pictures are not showing completely 100% what that's what we saw on the preview, but at least it has the model in here. Let's try and open it. Yeah, okay. So the the, the previews are just being cropped. So so, uh, but let's uh, let's try and upload this one. So just press upload.
Let's go home and see uh, how this turned out. Once the images has been uploaded, you get an email from Pix4D with an estimated processing time. This normally takes around 40 minutes. When the model is ready, you get another email with a detailed report about your model. The email also contains a link so you can preview the model in a browser. Super smooth process. Nice job, Pix4D. As you can see, the model is far from perfect and it will require some practice to get it right. When flying high above the object, areas that are not visible to the camera will not be included in the model. With that said, it's pretty amazing that you can do 3D models like this from 2D images. Let's see how the model compares to the drone footage recorded by the Mavic Pro. It's possible to export your project and import it into the PIX4D desktop version. This is a Windows only version. From the desktop, you have access to additional tools that uh, can help you uh, examine or improve the model. You can even get a height map. I like the cloud service as it makes it super easy to get started. Pictures are automatically downloaded and you can push them directly from your phone to the cloud service. Now you're ready to go and experiment with some 3D mapping. It's fun and it's super easy to get started. But be sure to know your options if you experience a flyaway like I did. And use the information provided in this video uh, at your own risk. Finally, I want to mention that I studied the data from the first mission and I discovered that the picture in the app preview was actually cropped. Obvious? Yeah, I think so. You can just click the picture to see it in full size. This means that it actually turned out that, that the footage from the first mission was okay with the water tower and frame. I do recommend to take a look at the pictures recorded live. You can do that by pressing the camera icon in top of the user interface. In this way, you have a clear idea if something is wrong. Mapping a tutorial? If so, smash the like button below. If you're new to this channel, Consider subscribing so you don't miss out on new stuff.